From New York City, it's From the Top at Carnegie Hall. Tonight, exciting music performed by a 17-year-old pianist, a stylish 17-year-old violinist, and a 14-year-old jazz singer. Exclusive corporate funding for From the Top at Carnegie Hall is provided by Liberty Mutual. Additional funding is provided by the Bernard Osher Foundation, the Jack Kent Cook Foundation, Helen and Peter Bing, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the EHA Foundation. Please welcome the host of From the Top at Carnegie Hall, Christopher O'Reilly. Thank you and welcome. We've got a sort of a classical jazz twist going on as a running theme through the program tonight. Two kids who play classical music heavily influenced by jazz, and our big finale is an all-out jazz medley straight from the American Songbook. Our first stop in the journey from classical music to jazz takes us to one of the birthplaces of jazz, New Orleans. Here's 17-year-old Ronald Joseph. I started piano when I was around five years old. I'd go to my grandmother's house on, you know, summer mornings, and, you know, I'd just sort of toy around with it. And, you know, I was 14, but, like, right about to make 15 when, you know, Katrina happened. You know, I'd watch, you know, the, the images that were going on TV, and it just wasn't real. <laughs> you know, the fact that school had sort of ended suddenly, because I, I had stuff due <laughs> on Monday, August 29th. The piano was up front. Of course, we had to take all the floors out up there. Not this room, but that room unit. where the air conditioning unit is, is where the piano sat. That was uh, the first piano I ever played. My grandfather's a New Orleans firefighter, so he was here firsthand. When I came back in here, they still had all of the furniture and stuff. Just everything, it's, it's like somebody just came in and, and just flipped it all over. I was in Vietnam in uh, 69, 70, and I saw a lot of stuff. Right now, if I, had a, if I had to choose between going to Vietnam today and going through Hurricane Katrina, I'd go to Vietnam. Uh, my family and I were sort of displaced for a little while, and on the Friday before my 15th birthday, my teacher called me and said, I have this situation in New York. When Katrina happened, of course, we couldn't come back into the schools, but people were just so incredibly generous. I mean, Julia was so generous, they gave us a spot free. He had always talked about going there as a young child, and we always thought, how could we get him to Julia? We never, you know, we don't have that kind of money. So we said, well, are you ready to go to New York? <laughs> and I think his mom was saying, no, <laughs> maybe not. It was very hard because, like he said, he was still 14. I went to the back and I, I cried a lot and I said, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I know it's a decision that I have to make. New York really brought out a lot in me. I started being prouder of being a classical musician and being around that many young people who, you know, actually I could have a musical conversation with, <laughs> it's a cool thing. I mean, it was an incredible transformational year. So in some ways, you owe it to Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> I hopefully will be able to see a lot more places and, you know, travel a lot, but, you know, New Orleans is home. Please give a nice, warm New York welcome to 17-year-old Ronald Joseph. <laughs> Ronald, how does it feel to be welcomed in New York for a second time since Katrina? 
Great. <laughs> Great to be back. <laughs> this piece uh, that you're going to play is, is very much connected to your hometown and, and New Orleans tradition. What is it? It's called Mardi Gras, and it's the second movement of The Enchanted Garden by Richard Daniel Poor. Great American composer. And uh, I reveal to you a, a personal connection of my own with this piece. What's that? It is dedicated to you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's written for me. So I'm going to be uh, watching you and listening to you like a hawk. <laughs> was I, 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 you, played it, you played it beautifully at the music rehearsal. Was I, was I hard on you, or did I have you any, any good ideas for you at all? Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Ronald, I'm going to stop you one more time because you did this very civilized thing. You cut back here because there was a forte and you made it, you wanted to make a crescendo song. I was like, oh, let's come back here so I can get louder. No, just play it all loud. It was too polite. Just that one place. You know what I mean? You're too good of a musician for this piece, Ronald. <laughs> That's what the problem is. Get mad. Wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> so just think about this as, you know, some horrible drunk who's come into the room <laughs> singing some really lousy song, okay? And then, uh, da, 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 da. That's exactly what it needs to be like. It needs to have bad breath, this place. <laughs> I think you have to start from here and drop. There you go.
I gotta say, it sounds to me like the piece should be dedicated to you. <laughs> it sounded like it was written for you anyway. It, was, it has its beautiful moments, it has its horrifying moments too. You really brought a lot of fire to it. But what about the future? I mean, do you ever have doubts about pursuing the piano as, as your life? As a, especially with classical music, you know, everything is not clear um, all the time, so I sort of have to stay on my feet about it, um, not necessarily expect anything, but don't be surprised if something crazy happens like, like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> expect everything, I think, Ronald, is, is, should be your, your motto, because uh, you've got everything coming to you. So, yes, it's great, Ronald. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.